What is up, Earth's mightiest subscribers? It's Blur Without Fear. Welcome back to the channel. All right, today's video, we're going to be talking about Blood Syndicate Season 1, Number 4, by Jeffrey Thorne, Chris Cross, and Sean Damian Hill. And in this video, I'm going to be breaking down a new Blood Syndicate member Silk's powers. We're also going to be talking about who are the three new members of the Blood Syndicate and why they don't like each other, and how Tech 9 and Y Sun got their powers despite not being anywhere near the Big Bang. You can't see me, you Stevie, wondering how I reach more evolutions than Evie and make it look easy. Okay, so in the last video, we were introduced to a character by the name of Silk, a character who I kind of wondered whether or not this was the character Masquerade, but maybe with a different name, or maybe there was a, some kind of flip-flop, a change, whatever. That's actually not the case, because we do actually see the character Masquerade a little later on, but we'll get into that here in a minute. In my previous video for Blood Syndicate Season 1, Number 3, I really had no idea exactly what his powers were, and well, I take that back. I had some ideas, but some of them sound kind of crazy, but now I'm starting to think maybe I wasn't as crazy as I was thinking. Initially, I thought maybe his powers actually had to do with actual silk. Well, apparently that's kind of the case. I was thinking maybe more in kind of a, you know, Spider-Man, like, web shooty kind of way, or maybe he could just, you know, generate silk, which kind of is the case, or at least it seems that way. The costumes that we saw Tech 9 and Fade wearing at the end of Blood Syndicate Season 1, Number 3, those costumes were created by Silk, and I don't mean Silk just sat down for a while and, you know, started, you know, coming up with all kinds of, you know, fabric and material, sewing everything up. No, it seems his actual power is taking, you know, cloth and fabric and, well, you know, silk and turning it into whatever he wants. Likely able to generate these things as well. I'm starting to wonder if maybe this is on some kind of level that's similar to the Eternals character Cersei in Marvel Comics, because unlike the movie in the comics, Cersei creates her own clothes. Like, she actually uses her transmutation ability to generate and create all kinds of fancy costumes and outfits for herself. This kind of seems like the very same case. A lot of the costumes we see in this issue and the previous issue came from Silk himself. Now, the other thing I want to get into is who are the three new members of the Blood Syndicate that we see in this issue. Now, the first one we're introduced to is the character of Brick House, a character from the original Milestone Media comic Blood Syndicate, and for the most part seems largely unchanged from her original 1990s version. The original version of the Blood Syndicate character Brickhouse dealt a lot with body negativity, having a tremendous lack of self-confidence in her appearance because of the fact that when she got her powers during the Big Bang, her skin was transformed into brick. Like, literally, she is humanoid brick. She is a humanoid brick wall of a person, and it made her feel ugly and unwanted. She was having issues with you know, being accepted by her family and all kinds of other stuff, and a lot of that seems to be present here just based on some of the things that Marta, aka Brickhouse, is telling us in this issue about how she had nowhere to go. She was kicked out of her house, and that the only place she had to go was to Holocaust, and then she realized that Holocaust was crazy and tried to get away from it. Brickhouse's powers granted her with superhuman durability ability and superhuman strength, making her pretty much the strength powerhouse of the group, and a real heavy hitter on a Hulk-like level. And then, of course, we have the character Masquerade, who I mentioned earlier, who is the character that we see here that is transformed into a dragon. This is a part of Masquerade's power set, as we've seen in the original comics. One of the things Masquerade used to regularly do was to turn into, like, a humanoid lion or beast-like creature, and he's doing that here, yet again, this time turning into a dragon. That's Masquerade's whole power set is being able to transform into whatever he can imagine. And seemingly having the properties of whatever that thing may or may not be. Now, in the original comics, Masquerade was a trans man. Now, we don't know if that's the case here or not, if that is still in place. I think it very likely is, and maybe we'll see something down the road that will kind of speak to this. But one of the things that is definitely still in play here is that the original version of Masquerade used to do a lot of overcompensating for fear of being found out as being trans. This kind of seems to be in place here because Masquerade is putting on a whole show trying to show out a against Brickhouse, and Brickhouse in turn is also kind of, you know, going up against this character as well, because, well, for one, they're both 
from rival gangs. Brickhouse was a part of the Blue Street Syndicate's gang, and Masquerade was a member of the Paris Bloods, but the Paris Bloods, they're all gone now. They've all been wiped out by Holocaust. And this is kind of speaking to the original formation of the Blood Syndicate, because in the original comics, the Blood Syndicate was largely a group of rival gangs that had come together in the wake of the Big Bang to try and help protect their neighborhood. Most of them came from very different gangs that were actually at each other's throats prior to gaining superpowers. Powers. So this is pretty much on brand for these two characters. It would make sense that they wouldn't like each other when they first bumped into one another. The third character that we see, oddly enough, and pun intended, is Third Rail, who was also another member of the original Blood Syndicate. And much like I spoke about in my previous video, that Third Rail's powers was originally to just absorb electricity to augment his muscle mass and strength. In this new version of the Milestone Media comics, he's able to turn into a pure energy form as well as in increases muscle mass and strength, and very likely can even use this same ability to project electricity just the same. So that's very likely on the table. Now we're also seeing the third rail and brick house they're meeting each other for the first time as well as Third Rail comes from the gang, the K-Dragons, which is very likely the K standing for Korean since Third Rail in the original comics was Korean. Now also in the original comics, Third Rail and Brickhouse were an item. Now here, they don't know each other. They're literally meeting for the first time. So that relationship is very likely gonna grow from here if they choose to go that direction. I don't see why they wouldn't, but yeah, that's pretty much what's going on here. This is kind of the reason why they are not at each other's throats because the K-Dragons and the Blue Street Syndicate, for the most part, don't really have that much beef with one another. Now, the one mystery of this comic that is yet to be revealed and is hinted at in this issue is how did Tech-9 and why Sun get their abilities in this new rebooted Milestone universe because originally in the comics they were present for the Big Bang. That's how they got their powers. But in this new rebooted universe, Tech-9 and y Sun were serving in the military, specifically in the Persian Gulf, at the time that everything happened. So they wouldn't have been around for the Big Bang. So how did they get their abilities? Well, it's not explicitly spelled out in this issue, but what we can go by based on one of the panels we see very late into the comic, right before Brickhouse and Masquerade make their introductions, we see Wise Sun and Tech-9 pre-powers approach a building with an A on it. This A is actually the same A that we saw during the Milestone Returns Infinite Edition one-shot, as well as various times coming up in the Hardware series. This A is for Alva Industries, the very same Alva Industries that created the quantum compound that was in the tear gas used against the protesters during the Big Bang. So when our heroes approach this building, it already kind of seems to be bombed out. There's smoke going everywhere. I'm pretty sure this is the quantum compound and their exposure to it in this particular moment is very likely how they got their abilities. Tech 9's ability to generate and create guns, weaponry. And in this case, we even see him create a shield out of nowhere. And of course, Y Sun's ability to be 100% completely indestructible. And I'm gonna go on a limb and say the reason why this building is probably bombed out likely has to do with the character we saw in the previous issue and it's kind of popped up on the various covers of Blood Syndicate, Iron Butterfly, a character from the original Milestone comics run who is the field leader of the Shadow Cabinet. Iron Butterfly is very much connected to the character Y Sun in this new rebooted universe. As we saw in one of the previous issues, Y Sun mentioned that he turned to Islam because of a woman and that woman was Iron Butterfly. And at that particular time we saw her, it was in the midst of a recent explosion, very likely part of that same incident that led to Tech-9 and y Sun, as well as Iron Butterfly, getting their special powers. Now, a lot of other stuff kind of happens with this issue, but one of the things I do want to address is that you're probably asking why have I not brought up the character of Boogeyman, who is on the cover of this book. Boogeyman makes a cover appearance, but does not make an actual in-comic appearance, so there's really nothing to tell there. We don't really know what's up with him at this particular point, but I'm pretty sure we'll probably see him in the next issue or two. Who knows, but it seems like they are angling for him to be there, so we know he's on the way, but once again, it's one of those situations, like I always tell people, comic book covers lie. And this should be no surprise, considering the fact that the previous issue of Blood Syndicate Season 1, number 3, had Iron Butterfly on the cover, and she made not one single appearance in that issue, despite being the sole character on the cover. But anyways, I'm really enjoying this comic so far. I like the new dynamic for the group, and I love that, you know, Holocaust is being a whole supervillain. They're not trying to make him redeeming in any way, shape, form, or fashion. They're letting him be the villain that we 
have seen him be in the original comics, but they're leaning more into it even more. So they have made this dude an absolute nightmare where I thought the original Holocaust, while he was definitely a terrifying character, it was kind of hard for me to take him terribly serious because he always just kind of seemed to fail at whatever it was he was trying to do. But this version of Holocaust, is way more terrifying and I'm here for it. The, the fact that he literally blew up the Paris Island Bridge and that he is literally killing people left and right, taking out police, taking out rival gangs, taking out anyone who is not on his side is just making him a threat right now. And yeah, I can't wait to see the showdown. And it's kind of hinted he has some other characters with him who also have superpowers. So I can't wait to see who those characters wind up being. There are characters that he mentions like V and Bar, but we those names don't really ring a bell for me. They don't seem like the names of characters that were from the original run, so we'll have to wait and see who those characters are, or they could just be lackeys that he's willing to kill at a moment's notice, as we have seen him do previously. But anyways, if you want to know more about the original Blood Syndicate, check out this video up here. And if you've never heard of Milestone Media Shadow Cabinet, check out this video down here. In the meantime, let me know what you thought about Blood Syndicate Season 1, number 4. Keep it plus ultra, and sound off in the comments.